uh, play of the game from way down. Plus two, silence. Get Rainer getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Rainer. And what up? Welcome to the show tonight. We got a huge night. I'm about to bring you guys three matches this evening, and I can't waste much time because we have a live one starting in just one hour. But first off, we're going to take a look at a match that took place last night in Division A. This is Beast Coast versus Regen Retro. It will be a replay cast, uh, so perhaps you already know the result of this. I happened to have watched it last night. Someone was doing a POV stream. Uh, but we're gonna take a look at that either way because I know people out there probably want to see some of these matches going on uh, Yeah, party cam. Where did it all go? Well uh, packing up and moving so <laughs> Party cam stuff is gone uh, unfortunately uh, Welcome to game number one. It's gonna be sky temple and introducing the team on the left hand side We got super goat playing the Anduin secret triple three on the Rexar Monkus playing Sylvanas the pie maker on a new barack and mega muffin in stealth mode on Zeratul make some noise for beast coast And over on the left or excuse me the right hand side in the red We got Zami bars the captain on Johanna Deltron playing Rhaegar splash on the Hanzo Meliodas on Greymane and playing that Yorel it's a Aaron. Make some noise for Regen Retro. And we got some lag there. That's on my side. Uh, apologies to you guys at home. But uh, let's see what's going on here. Looks like maybe an early invade attempt here. Pie Maker playing aggressive on this siege camp inside that bush, taking a peek at what uh, perhaps is going on in these rotations of Regen Retro. But doesn't find much of anything. So far, it's going to be Splash at mid, and the rest of Regen Retro finding some damage onto Zeratul. He does have a blink away. Going to be fine. Mega Muffin finding the supporting now of Super Goat. Going to be on that Anduin tonight, and let's take a look at that build already going into, of course, Pursuit by Grace. Of course. All right. Uh, maybe wouldn't have said of course, but interesting. Uh, this aggressive pickup on Anduin. How much damage will it get? I'm going to try to watch throughout this matchup here on Sky Temple to see if it gets any value. So far, there's a good chastise. Deltron getting locked in, but Rhaegar going to be healthy. Providing his own healing this time. The matchup up top, it's Aaron up against Secret 333 on that Rexar. Uh, how can Yorel match up in this? I'd imagine the uh, Rexar should be safe, but the Misha, maybe not as much. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. There is an invade and we completely missed it. First kill of the game, it belongs to Regen Retro and they're gonna be able to steal away this siege camp as well. On top is the Captain Zami Bars grabbing that for the red side. Now gonna rotate towards mid where Sylvanas all by her lonesome. Monkus maybe a little bit deep here. There's the Haunting Wave, we'll get him back pretty far and will barely survive. No interrupt that time on that Haunting Wave. Sylvanas will be safe. As the match continues, Yorel up top looking to find level fours for Regen Retro. They're getting pretty close now at about three and three quarters. Here's Greymane and Rhaegar, two fantastic Merc takers on this Bruiser camp right now. Just ahead of what should be the call out uh, in a moment for those temples that will be spawning mid and top side of the map. But Retro going to go ahead and put that out on the map as soon as they can. Not going to try to time it out at all. Bottom side, it's Hanzo who's been doing a lot of solo soaking throughout this one. We haven't really seen too much of a front behind him. Uh, just playing safe by these walls, getting XP for Regen Retro as they're working on yet another camp. Meliodas and Deltron comboing for this siege camp here in the bottom lane. And they'll go ahead and be able to grab that. Now it is just a half level lead, five to five and a half in favor of Regen Retro. The first temple phase will be spawning in just about 20 seconds. And currently it's two heroes up top. For Beast Coast, Mega Muffin was up there trying to uh, support the Rexar just a bit, but pretty low health. Might have to be careful as now finding a skirmish with Zami Bars. But with just Deltron behind, really not a lot of damage for Retro to be able to secure a kill on Zeratul here. It's the bottom lane that's getting the pressure. Siege Giants right now from Retro pushing in with Meliodas and Splash. As Pie Maker is the one in defense, here comes Zeratul. Mega Muffin going to try to look for something on the backside, but just going to take a cleave in onto those Giants. Try to whittle down their HP bars as 
Temples are active, and currently it's both shooting in favor of Regen Retro Yorel up top, just up against this Misha who just got swatted off the point by the Temple Guardian. And over at mid, it's Rhaegar and Greymane holding that with ease. Uh, looks like maybe top will... No, I don't know. Johanna coming back in? Yeah, I think Yorel gives this one up, if I recall. I did watch this last night. I'm trying to remember everything that happened. So Greymane's going to finish up this one at mid. There go the bonus shots. Uh, and it's going to be a fight up in the top lane. Level 7 for Regen Retro. Those talents are up on your screen. Subdue picked up for Johanna. Maybe she can find something big here in this stack up. So far, nothing but Zami Bars. Good enough to push back the heroes of Beast Coast. Just leaving Misha on the point. And there goes Retro back on this top temple. And they will secure themselves five more bonus shots, which are going to shoot at this top lane. Gonna start opening up this map a bit. Uh, mid lane, let's look at the damage done during the objective. It's down to about 66% health. Uh, and top lane, lost one of its turrets. The other one's in about 50%. Bottom lane took a bit of damage earlier. One of those turrets already down. The other one, not too much health left on it. As now it looks like Retro wanting to play aggressive on these camps once again. They scouted out, see no one's on it. I don't know if they saw Anduin that time. Super Goat was nearby. But they do see Sylvanas, a target they tried to kill earlier. But once again, the haunting wave. Good enough to get Monkus out of there. Survival skills at 1,000. Johanna's still playing near this camp. Uh, it's still about a level and a half away from level 10 for Regen Retro. So they definitely want to be soaking up all these mini waves crashing onto the walls. There you see Greymane and Rhaegar working on picking up that mid wave. And maybe a rotation down to bottom. Ooh, Zeratul getting pinged here. Sammy trying to chase something down, but I don't think anyone's close enough to make anything happen on Mega Muffin, nor will they. Greymane leaping in. Dark Flight. Lots of damage from Greymane now as the. Force of no, not force of will. What's it called? Uh, why did I call it force of will? Leap of faith. I knew there was an of in the middle, and like maybe partial dyslexia there. <laughs> Leap of faith, of course. Sorry, Anduin. My apologies to you, of course, my prince. It's gonna be some XP potentially missed at mid. Can Rhaegar get up here? It doesn't look like he's gonna make the rotation. That would have been level 10 for Regen Retro. Instead, they want this siege camp for the bottom lane. As Johanna keeping an eye on the other side. There's level 10 now with enough XP in the bank to potentially invade. Looks like Zami gonna lead his team on in. Deltron nearby, Splash and Meliodas. Four heroes from Regen Retro are gonna work on getting this camp, but tens are very close for Beast Coast. Pymaker right here just. Got the level 10s, didn't lock in the cocoon quite yet, so Retro will be safe. They'll see Giant's going to get a few of those big boulders off, but not going to do any damage onto the fort. But this will do some damage to a fort. Regen Retro on the bottom temple, just now active. They have the only kill of the game as Yorel making the rotation down from top, leaving Rexar all by his lonesome around that vision. Misha going to work on flipping that to blue. And they're going to make their move on down here, but maybe a little bit late as now it's a 5v4 in favor of Regen Retro. There's the Cursed Bullet. Hits onto the Pie Maker backside. Yorel hopping in, trying to get some damage, but Light Bomb, baby. Going to make sure Aaron doesn't get anything going. Pie Maker still low. Getting some heals from Andu and that Leap of Faith once again. Keeping heroes alive for Beast Coast. And once again, a fight, no kills. A good skirmish, lots of damage. Uh, you know, you saw the arrow come out from Hanzo, stunned a few, but it was the damage they stunned. Looked like they wanted to turn their focus onto the front line, which was a little bit lower. But they never did quite find their target. And ends up everyone survives, but hey, I mean, you don't lose anyone. Uh, not a bad thing if you're able to get this entire temple. Bonus shots about to fire from Deltron here. And that should be enough to take out this mid fort. Ooh, it's barely going to live, but Aaron nearby with the mini wave, maybe that's enough to get it down. And it is. One leap on in. Goomba stomping down the mid fort as you roll. Let me grab a sip of water. I'm getting thirsty. You guys been been uh, getting me excited with this match, Regen Retro, Beast Coast. Alright, looks like top camp being worked on here. 
as the other top camp, this bruiser camp from the blue side, pushing in the middle of the lane, top lane. Just Rexar here, but Zeratul coming in support, trying to push anything they can in here, but a lot of heroes now showing up as well from Regen Retro, and we might have a skirmish, four on four, just Johanna and Sylvanas not here in this fight, is Jarell gonna leap in first? Here comes Zeratul blinking him with that cleave, can he get back out? Yes, he can, Mega Muffin at 50% health, but here comes that Divine Reckoning, uh, is that not Divine Reckoning? What's it called? Uh, from Yurel. I don't know. VP is even better though. Look at this setup. And I know what happens in this fight. Did they get it? Oh, maybe it wasn't this fight. No, good silence though. Yurel's down. They traded out for Anduin as the scatter arrows hitting the backside as the new Rex trying to escape. Hanzo putting some good damage for it. There's now it's Misha, the one fallen to the quiver of the Shamada bro. Second kill of the game for Regen Retro in that fight. They got a, another half kill on the Misha at the end of it. So two and a half to one's the kill count. That kill on a Nubrak will make it three and a half now for Regen Retro. With a Temple active in 15, that's a big death that might be pretty costly for Beast Coast if they can't put any pressure onto this Temple. Uh, Yarel running towards the bottom, but I think Retro's got enough room here to just walk right on top of this top Temple with that... Uh, front line down is really just a Misha you have to worry about on the front side. Uh, not too scary. But they're not moving on the temple yet. I'm a bit surprised here. Yurel is on the bottom getting some shots heading towards the top. And it's Misha getting free shots on the top side of the map. Is this going to be a boss force? Zami a little bit late checking out the siege camp. Did have it scouted, but without any real advantage, didn't want to make a move, instead just playing it safe, grabbing their own camp, finishing off shots on the bottom side. I gotta think this was an opportunity to maybe put the pedal to the metal for Regen Red Show. This is the safer play, they are ahead, they do have now a three structure lead, which on Sky Temple, you really can't ask for more, it's just a matter of playing uh, at your pace here, making sure you're getting even trades on the temples, and you should be able to win from this point. And of course a boss on the map, and knowing that there's heroes top, Retro gonna start working on it, and Nubrak has it scouted. I don't think anyone from Retro's checked that bush yet, so they have no idea that anyone's nearby, though they do see the Zeratul and get it scouted now with that Sonic Arrow from Hanzo. Here comes a Nubrak, real charging in, but the big cursed bullet. Really putting a threat onto a Nubrak. I didn't quite see what booped her out. Uh, booped him out, the Nubrak, but... Nonetheless, it was picked up by Retro Boss pushing bottom lane. Ooh. Ooh, that's a sub. Arrow gifting a sub over to Blood Skillion. Thanks a lot for that. Appreciate it. Uh, and hey, you're welcome. You know, you know, you're welcome. I don't mind helping out. I'm actually casting you on Thursday again, so look at that. Big boss though, big opportunity here for Retro. They got a catapult pushing him with. Big fat mini wave as well. Here comes Yurel trying to leap in. Zami playing a bit safer on the backside. Finds that kill onto Misha. Could be big because now it's just the Anubarak. Uh, the only thing to worry about. And with 16s very close here for Retro, they can really engage onto a fight. Taking advantage is boss still at 50% health. So opportunity to win the game right here if they can find any kills. But they're playing it safe. They're backing on out. They don't want to play it risky. Even with the 16s, they know they have the structure lead. It's 5-2. to two. Camps available on the map, including this bruiser camp on the top side. There goes Yurel hopping over the wall. Hanzo moving in. Greymane leaping over as well with Dark Flight. Deltron and Johanna nearby. So it's just a clean take and really full respect being shown from Beast Coast, knowing they're down that talent here and not wanting to take any fights here. Bottom keep down. So one more loss in a fight. And Beast Coast could be kissing game one goodbye as it's a double tank temple phase. This could be big. Uh, if Retro gets down another one of these keeps, let's look at top, still has a wall. Uh, mid still has a wall. So it's gonna need a full temple to be able to get any any of these uh, remaining keeps down. Looks like the setup will be up top from Deltron as five heroes from Beast Coast moving towards the vision. So this is scouted by Regen Retro, but Misha gonna walk onto that point either way as Johanna is just gonna hold it saying, hey, no, this is our vision. We'll fight you, but we're going to take the advantage with that little token in the top lane. Now the aggressive move in from all the members of Beast Coast will convert it over as 
Rhaegar doing his job, already getting half these shots off the top temple, and Beast Coast finally realizing that they have to make a move. There's the VP on the backside. Mega Muffin calling for the light bomb, and it connects onto two. See you later, Hanzo. Now Meliodas in trouble. Greymane might fall, but Mega Muffin had to back out, but he goes right back in, finds the kill. It's a double for Beast Coast as Aaron and Zami Bars, along with Deltron, still in this fight. Big impale from Anubarak's gonna lock in two more. It's a quad kill for Beast Coast. Two temples still active. Opportunity here to flip this game around. But they gotta worry about this Bruiser Camp top lane. Is anyone going back? Is Zeratul going? There goes Zeratul. Mid being collected by the Pie Maker. Those remaining shots up top being grabbed by Secret and the Pet Bear. So mid fort did fall there, bottom fort getting low. Still a few more shots here from a new brag. I don't think it's going to be enough. About 10 more shots remaining. Uh, Siege Giants could do it. Oh wait, those are going red side. Okay. Does mid fall? Or, or bot, I mean? No, it doesn't. Camp on the map. It's a siege camp here for Beast Coast. They have a lead in this one for the first time in the match. Uh, about a quarter level lead, which is big, heading into the late game on Sky Temple. They gotta win fights, and from this point, if they find those level 20s, they should be able to find themselves something before Retro reaches their level 20 mark, and that could be the opportunity they're waiting for. There's forts down. I mean, they just move on to one of these keeps. Look at the mid lane, look at the top lane. Uh, if they can find some kills, they can move right on through and potentially find a win on Sky Temple, but... They got to find one more fight. And Retro on the other side, they're looking for the same thing. One more fight from them marching right through bot lane and potentially winning this one as well. Keeping an eye on the boss though, uh, 30 seconds away from spawning Retro nearby. Do they want to force something here? Uh, could be a risky play knowing they have the lead in the temple structure shots. Uh, still a slight lead, although that last objective really did a lot of flipping because both those temples were single-handedly shot over by Beast Coast. But Retro, they're gonna stay here either way. I don't know if, did Bisha scout that? I don't think she did. So neither side knows where either side is. And there goes Beast Coast to the top lane and that might be just what Retro wants to go onto this boss. But they don't show everyone. Beast Coast not leaving the full information available. So both sides now just playing it slow. They want their level 20s. Neither wants to be aggressive as his bottom lane so pushed out. So it's going to favor Beast Coast for all this XP as Retro. They have to play a bit more aggressive, although the top lane is pushed out. They only have two lanes of soak available to them uh, because this bottom lane being pushed out by the catapults. And I, I got to believe Beast Coast doing this for a reason. Or maybe not. Ah, they're close enough to 20. Get this, you're 20, and then take the fight. And they're gonna start the boss. Are they? Accidental boss pull by Monkus. Top lane shots coming through from Yorel already. And this is the only temple on the map. And already with that structure lead, a uh, big extra value as no one's walked on this from Beast Coast. They were waiting for their 20s, but Retro didn't have theirs either. And I gotta think you gave up 75% of those shots for basically nothing, and now you're on even talents anyway. Retro looking for the fight. Big Condemn gonna pull in a few as the VP only touching two heroes. Walking on in is Misha. He's gonna try to charge through and does onto the Rhaegar, but a lot of damage backside. Look at Hanzo. He's free to just cast away with these scatter arrows as Zami Bars gets a big ancestral Johanna still alive. No one's fallen, and it's very reminiscent of that fight we saw earlier where just trading damage back and forth and no heroes falling. Still no one's down. Zeratul able to blink out. Meliodas very low on the gray main. He's going to be safe as well. And no kills by the end of the fight. Oh, light bomb. Oh, no. A little bit of a miscue. The final heroic available for Beast Coast being used there. Does Retro know? Zami Bars may be moving in here with this squad. Uh, knowing that there's no heroics there. Here comes Mega Muffin, gonna blink in, find a big cleave, but now slowed up by Johanna, very low, and will fall, Zeratul down, 
Now Pie Maker in trouble, and Nubrat getting some scatter arrows to the face from Splash. Hanzo gonna try to chase. Has that explosive arrow, but will be able to make it out the rest of the team of Beast Coast. But look at this boss available on the map, and Retro knows this is their win condition. They're gonna start it up and just move it on to a bruiser camp. This Beast Coast, they won't even make an attempt at a defense here. I think that's just gotta be game. Uh, giving up a boss on an empty lane uh, the 19th minute of the game. Yike. Uh, and there it goes. We'll be joined with some siege camps as well. So an enormous push about to happen in the bottom lane. Retro going to try to close it out. Zeratul will be spawning in 15 seconds. Has that VP available. The rest of the heroics as well for Beast Coast are online. Misha showing in the lane. But Retro knows that's not their real target. They want this core. They got to keep their health bars. And they want to make sure the boss is on the core before they start taking any fights. And there it goes. Moving on in. Shield starting to take some damage. Here's the light bomb. Misses everyone. Mega Muffin not able to blink far enough on top of Retro. But backside now. It's a Nubarak trying to move in. But he's all by himself. The Pie Maker surrounded and stunned by that Dragon's Arrow. Splash fighting the kill. Core dropping now, 60%. VP comes out, slowing this down. Boss still alive, making a big slam onto Misha, who's still going to walk in and will fall. 50, 40, 30, 20. This is going to be game number one in favor of Regen Retro. So uh, let's take a look at this match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series. I got to flip it over here. How do I do that? There we go. Boom. Uh, so big damage numbers coming out from Mega Muffin, uh, Siege, and Hero Damage. Really leading his team, doing a tremendous amount of uh, in and out in those fights, blinking in with the cleave, and got plenty of value. The VP setup was great, but the light bombs were just slightly off, uh, preventing a few extra kills there in the later portion of the game. Let's take a look at these talents before we move on to game number two. Uh, if you're out there in chat, first off, thanks for stopping in. You're checking out a replay cast. This took place last night. Uh, Division A between Beast Coast and Regen Retro. Uh, we do have some live action coming on later this evening. Uh, Division D East at 9 o'clock. It'll be I Must Feed versus Nexus Cats. And at 10.30, Division B West, it'll be Deviled Kegs versus Roll One Esports. Hopefully... You guys can make it through the night with me. It's a long one, and we're just getting started. So let's switch on over to our webcam scene and get set up for game number two of this replay cast. Da -da -da -da. Exit. Quit replay. There we go. And it's going to be Volskaya Foundry. All right, game number two is loaded. Let me flip us on over to the in-game scene. And uh, we will introduce these teams. Left-hand side, starting off on the Chen. Secret 333, the Pie Maker is going to be playing Johanna, Mega Muffin on Maev, Super Goat on Alexstrasza, and Monkus. Look at this skin. I haven't seen it live yet, but it's Tickle Mephisto. Make some noise. They are Beast Coast. And on the right hand side in the red, we got A. Aaron on the Malfield, Deltron playing Taronda, Zami Bars on ETC, Meliodas on the Uther, and Splash playing. The Sylvanas. They are Regen Retro. Zoom on out and show you these level one talents. Uh, take a look at it. It's Prog Rock for the ETC. Plenty of globes here on Volskaya. Rotations between mid and top lane. Uther, of course, going into Hammer of the Lightbringer, so expect some aggressive play from this frontline Uther, Meliodas. Uh, I don't know if I've seen him play it too much this season, uh, but will be the Uther player for Regen Retro here in Season 8, and we're going to get a nice look at it here this evening as the solo lane matchup. A uh, bit odd seeing Malfiel up top. Usually you see that solo lane be the bottom, but Aaron comfy here up top. He's got four heroes in his face. Is this first blood? Yes, it is. Malfiel's going to fall. 
And Beast Coast on the board first here on Volskaya. E-Bag in the house says, sup, Murda with the Santa Wave. I'm doing fine, man. How about yourself? Thanks for joining us here. Hope you had a fantastic Monday, although it's probably the least favorite day of the week. You know, I'll try to make it a little bit better for you here. I have a triple header in NGS, including this replay cast. I'm excited. Invade attempt coming out from Beast Coast. They found the first blood and maybe feeling pretty confident after finding it. Uh, but Zamibar is leading his team on back. The retreat looks good so far. Meliodas the front line. That's Uther. He's got plenty of armor that he can find himself. So should be just fine. Uther going to use that well tap. Still around the camp is Mega Muffin. And an abundance thrown out by Alex Straza made me think they wanted to stay here. But they do back out, leaving it open for Regen Retro to go ahead and pick it up themselves. And still no kills for Regen Retro as it's uh, a Aaron moving to the top lane once again, playing this Malthiel. And it's weird, you got the Chen down bottom, that's their soul lane. And up top it's Mephisto who's having to deal with this Malthiel now. Are they going to make the rotation? No, you know what? I think they want to keep this mouthfeel in the double soak. That's the plan. As now you see Retro maybe playing a bit more aggressive now, knowing they have this double soaker, knowing that Mephisto's top. They walk onto the camp, but this turret's still alive. Meliodas holding the turret from the other side. Will he drop it? So far, no. Big follow-up stun from Taronda after the power slide. Going to secure the kill onto Maya. Yeah, there's a dragon for him, by Super Goat. But she's got to be careful. Alex Strauss is going to fall as well. Meliodas goes down, but that's just Uther. He's going to provide heals in the rest of this fight. So make it a quad kill and make it... Oh, no. All five. A mega kill for regen retro and a camp steal. Big swing in this one. And they're going to parlay it into a take on the support camp as well. Malfiel, Sylvanas, fantastic camp clearers. Should be able to take this pretty quickly. And Taronda standing on control point A. Going to start it up for Retro. Maev nearby the support camp. But there ain't no chance she wants to walk in without any help from the rest of her team. Alex Straza the only other one nearby. Now it's Johanna and Tickle Mephisto showing up. As control point A underway, looking for level 7 up top is Malfiel now going to make the rotation down towards mid. This wave here might give it to him. Uh, so look for a clear and maybe look for Retro to play a bit more aggressive on this point, knowing they have that lead. Good uh, start up, the engagement from Deltron landing that Lunar Flare. As level 7s are collected, we only see the cleanse so far. There's Hand of Protection from Uther, uh, and yeah, Cold Hand, that's going to do a lot. Uh, going to provide extra slows. Extra opportunities for Sylvanas to get some of her damage out. And Calderai Resistance, fantastic pickup from Toronto. Oh, wow, Power Slide. Can't get the follow up because of the Iron Skin. Pie Maker should be safe, but no. You got the big hammer coming down from Utha, baby. Turret dropped by the wall. It'll go down before the minion wave crashes in, but they get the trig off protector. Malfield Toronto inside. And they're working on this mid wall quickly. Still down is Johanna, so not a big front line available. Just the Chen. But look where Chen's at. Secret in the bottom lane. Still looking for XP. Not be not gonna be able to help his team here during this defense. Uh, but Retro just gonna rotate. Good damage coming from the Maya. Look at Mega Muffin. Not gonna have a minigun in the face. Should be careful. Power Glove gonna be avoided by the Vault of the Wardens. So ultimately, uh, no wells taken down. Uh, what? One tower there? And now a potential kill? I mean, Aaron's in trouble. He's gonna have to get some heals from Toronto. Toronto actually pulled back by Maiev, blinded now. Can Deltron keep himself alive? No! Fifth kill of the game there for Beast Coast as Pie Maker trying to maybe find something else, but gonna play it slower. Finds that abundance, gets some heals, and now looking around the map, it is a uh, fortification camp available. And I'd love to see them play aggressive here. No support. Uh, well, I mean, you have the Uther, I guess, Regen Retro. But their main support being down, Taronda not here. Maybe would have liked to have seen an invade, but they're going to play it safer. Work on their own fortification camp. Good scouting coming out from Taronda there, showing off where my Ev's at. But a gentleman's agreement on these camps. I'm surprised. Both sides, I mean, look at the XP. We're almost deadlocked here. 
nine and three quarters for both sides so should have those tens before control point b but will there be a kill here iron skin again after the power slide keeping pie maker up uh deltron just a, a split second too late on these stuns uh giving enough time to just spam click that iron skin coming out of the power slide stun uh able to keep johanna safe a couple times here already on volskaya as we do have level 10s both sides starfall mosh pit uh, last rites, uh, I believe Uther goes Divine Storm in this one, and Sylvanas goes with the uh, Haunting Arrow. On the other side, Durance of Hate, maybe you don't see that all the time, uh, will be that wave that Roots Heroes in. Flesh Shield, we got Keg, we got Warden's Cage, and the Cleansing Flame. So ideally, the Warden's Cage locks in a few, and Durance of Hate on top should be enough for Mephisto to get all the damage out. But it's all going to need to be started up by the Maiev. Pressure on Mega Muffin to find those big engagements. And was comfortable doing it in game one on the Zeratul with that VP. So I expect Mega to find at least one good fight for Beast Coast. At least one. And Zami, I expect something good out of you. You got that mosh pit, baby. Malfield doing a good job soaking. Let's uh, try to pull up these soak numbers. Uh, where is it? Is it this one? Here we go. Malfield leading all heroes in XP. 6,800. On the other side is Mephisto uh, with 6,000 XP. And now Mephisto... Uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, Malfield reaching the 7,000 mark. It's going to be the support camp, though. Regen Retro starting up, but nearby. Look at all these heroes. Mega Muffin, the one you got to be scared of, Retro. Uh, he's on the front side, but maybe not going for it. What, what's going on here? I thought Mega was going in. Had a chance for the Warden's Cage, but now just stuck inside a mosh pit. And it's going to be a double kill. Durance and Kate coming on the backside, so Muggus can get some of the damage out. But with Secret stuck here, he did steal away that Biotic Emitter. But he just got stuck there. I mean, his team was dead. Ends up being a triple for regen retro and control point B active. Deltron walking right on. Not a great time to lose heroes if you are Beast Coast. As Malfeel is going to be able to double soak. There are camps on the map. And control point B just being sat on by Deltron. Toronto looking for a scout here. We'll see Super Goat and Monkas on the camp, but they're really not too worried about invading it. They just want to get the fortification camp of their own, uh, retain this top side where they have level 13 talent still not available for Beast Coast. So they can really afford to take a fight up here, Regen Retro. And walking in before the 13s, there's Mega Muffin Pie Maker. They need to be careful because Dammy Bar's. Uh, power slide in could be pretty scary. They don't quite have the count, I'd imagine, on that Divine Storm from Uther. And that would be the one coming up first, shortly after the Starfall, actually. Toronto should be available in just a second. There it is. Still 38 seconds for ETC. They potentially could play it slow as... Whoa, what just happened? Malthiel took out a Chen as a Durance of Hate locking in a few. Do they get a kill? Yes, they do. It's Uther falling, but that's Uther. And you like when Uther's the one to fall first in a team fight if you have him on your team. Plenty of extra heals coming out. It's now the Cleansing Flame in this guy. Alex Straza attempting to keep a couple more heroes alive. But they won't be able to stand on this point any longer. Regen Retro about to get their second protector of the game. Aaron and Deltron were in it last time. Do they resume their duties? Uh, just Tyrande inside so far. Yeah, there goes Malfield as well. They're going to work on this top fort first. Well's pretty low. Uh... Laser surprisingly not hitting anything, not even the fort. So it's going to be a bit slower to get this fort down, but they're going to punch it anyway. Uther just respawning. He's coming back through that mid lane. Uh, another laser not hitting the fort, so uh, a few opportunities. Maybe get that down a bit sooner. The laser being the highest damage output that this Trick God Protector has. Uh, you really want to make sure those are hitting all your structures uh, whenever possible. Power Glove going to shove back my Ev. As it's Chen looking for the barrel, knocking around ETC. Zami Bar's maybe going to get tethered now by Maiev, but no power slide right through Mega Muffin. Zami Bar is going to be just fine. As the Protector is still 20 seconds, 40% health, making a move down to the bottom lane. There goes the laser. Uh, missing targets again. Uh, you know, I got to say, Aaron, you got to work on these laser shots, my dude. 
Gotta work on those laser shots. Uh, another one missing. Uh, you can count four during this one objective. Mega Muffin getting chased now. ETC looking for it. Uses that ward back. Uh, big Warden's cage. But Last Rite's gonna finish off Maiev. Uh, this is Johanna in trouble, but has Iron Skin. And on the backside, Cleansing Flame does finish off Sylvanas, so it's a one for one. But Pie Maker in trouble. Monk is in trouble. We'll be warping right back on Mephisto and falling. Secret 333 is low as well. Can Chen go down? No. Chen will survive, but opportunity here for Regen Retro to push on in this bottom lane. Fort in trouble. Uh, this well's going to be in trouble. And Control Point C coming up next. That's the bottom lane control point. So with that well down, advantage for Retro on the map, they're actually pinging these camps. They're like, don't worry about the fort. We want to get items, items, items. Uh, and got to say it three times because there are three available at the current moment. Zami going up top, wants to check out that support camp first, making sure that no one from Beast Coast was on it, but just getting information that they were on the siege camp as that's picked up. There goes ETC moving on to the point. Still no 16s for Beast Coast, so it should be a safe opportunity here for Retro, including the scouting coming out from Toronto, which has been pretty good today. Uh, Zami with the zoning as Aaron going to get the channel, and there's the Biotic Emitter in the hands of Sylvana. Still one more item on the map. It's a siege camp on the side of Regen Retro. Uh, will be scouted by Toronto again, but they see no one's on it, so they're going to take their time playing around mid, working on some of that XP, and up top, Malfield clearing out that top lane where that siege camp was taken just a moment ago by Beast Coast. We'll give room here for Tirana and Sylvanas, both these ranged archers moving on to the fortification camp alone. And I think Chen knows it. He's going to hop on in. Deltron in trouble. Gets the Lunar Flare to connect on the secret. But now, Barrel coming out, pushing Tirana around. Oh, oh no. The fight taking place on the top side means Last Rites gets the first kill of the fight. It's Maev that's down. And Divine Storm will take out Alex Straza. Now, secret being chased down by Malthiel and Oh, wow. It ends up just being a really sloppy play from Beast Coast, costing them an enormous amount of space on this map. Retro is going to be able to finish off that bottom fort, which they left before. They just said, ah, oh, we didn't care about it before. But now it's free. They have all those items still in their possession. Malfield's able to double soak. Huge swing off those kills. That triple kill making it 17 in the game for Regen Retro. And will be another camp. Malfield drops back. Mid fort as well should be falling here with the help of Sylvanas. Although she's not even going to have to use the black arrows here. They just have enough damage. Minion wave will soak up some of these shots. And now all of the outer structures are down. Will be three quarters of a level until 20 for regen retro. But I don't think that matters to them. I think they're confident. They're up 10 kills. Uh, they know someone was on that point. But can they find Pie Maker? They do. Malthiel revealing her in the bush. But Johanna able to scoot back. Has Iron Skin. Still uh, pretty far away from level 20. But take a look. Top lane. Siege Camp. It's alive with the Catapult in the top lane. And everyone from Beast Coast is here in this bottom lane right now. Paying no attention to what's going on up there. Uh, so that could eventually be onto that keep wall. And free damage onto the keep for Regen Retro. If no one from Beast Coast responds. And they're so far away from level 20, like, I gotta think that they just gotta play it safe. Worry about this another day. Uh, I don't know if you have any chance of getting 20 before this control point sees over. And the moment Retro gets it, they're able to just walk in and essentially nullify all the time that's been started up there by Super Goat playing Alex Straza. Here we go, desperation now from Beast Coast. They're like, go, 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 looking for anything they can find. Zami Bar's on the conveyor belt, avoiding the condemn and power sliding to safety. The speed boost from the conveyor belt, enough to get him to safety. And now with level 20s, going for that bolt of the storm. ETC gonna look for that big blink mosh. But it's Warden's Cage first, Pie Maker getting all sorts of assaulted. And uh, that time Iron Skin was not iron enough. Retro finding the kill, finding themselves now back on top of Control Point C and back on top of Volskaya Foundry as they have an enormous lead. All six of their structures still standing. 
Uh, free fortification camp here. No one's going to respond from Beast Coast as Amibar is just going to stand at mid, letting this wave crash. Waiting for his team to show up at this support camp, the final thing in their arsenal they want. They already have one. You see Splash still holding on to it from last time. Here comes Deltron and Meliodas. And without level 20, is Beast Coast still playing respect. They can't afford a fight. They can't afford any more deaths, especially with this Trigoth Protector about to be coming. It's 95% on the channel. No one nearby. So Retro hopping on in. Once again, it's Malthiel. Uh, but Malthiel is going to be the uh, the pilot this time, not the gunner. So we'll see how uh, Deltron does with the old uh, laser beam. Maybe better than what we were seeing I'd already say it's better. <laughs> Still no 20s for Beast Coast as it's Johanna taking the first portion of this damage. Leaping in now, looking for its Uther. He has that Divine Storm, but still not ripping the cord as Meliodas. Gonna wait until this keep is down, potentially. Dragon Queen Pop Supergo trying to slow this down, but once the keep is down, this trick is going to be moving onto the core, and there it goes. Warden's Cage trying to slow it down as we get a sub from Shui five months in a row. This could be the end, though. Maev getting Divine Storm, but it's Durns of Hate. Is this enough for Malthiel to finally find some kills in this game? Just seven in the game so far for Beast Coast as Retro popping two Biotic Emitters right on top of the core. It's a ton of damage coming from Malthiel. Can they get any of these kills? So far, no. Chen in the barrel trying to push Levanas towards one of those keeps but can't quite do it. Malthiel though, Aaron could fall here but the keep could fall as well. Just 30% remain. They find the kill on the Malthiel but he's going to be right on back. I don't think it matters. ETC and Sylvana say, hey guys, look at the core. It's almost down. GG, game number two and the set. It's a domination for Regen Retro. Let's take a quick look at this match summary brought to you. Oh, acquired. another sub? Wreck, stop it. Stop it. Appreciate the love. Uh, Arrow, Shui, and then Wreck. Three subs tonight. You guys are amazing. Beautiful people. Thank you so much for stopping in. We got a lot of action coming tonight, so... Uh, thanks for being here now, and hopefully you're staying for the rest of the night. But yeah, let's take a quick look at this uh, match summary. Uh, stat screen first, we got Mephisto uh, leading Beast Coast with 50k damage, and Malthy on the other side. Uh, pretty good job overall. 12 kills for Aaron. That is exactly what you're looking for when you are playing the Malthy. Five stacks onto the last rights. Uh, yeah, fully stacked, baby. Uh, here is your talent screen before we move on. Uh, I think we have about 15 minutes, so we can just chill and chat if you guys want. Uh, maybe we'll take a short break. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, anything you guys want?